Hi gang, Scott here. In the last couple of videos, I've talked about Lightroom masks and coupling masks in presets in Lightrooms to create some pretty powerful presets. And in this video, I wanna take this idea a little further to something I'll refer to as an accent preset. And what this is, is uh, take something that you do often and you use the masking tools to create the look, like you know, adding warmth to a sky or adding detail to the midtones or something like that where you're using uh, a range mask or something like a, a radial and changing the sliders. But it's, you do this type of thing on many of your photos. Well, I wanna show you how to save that as an accent preset that you can grab later and really speed up your workflow with your landscape photos. So uh, what we'll do is I'll show you an example of something that I do very often on my landscape photos. We'll turn that into a preset and then use that accent preset on a completely different photo. So let's get started. So this photo here, I've finished my processing on it and I wanna open up the masking area here and show you I've done a few different types of treatments here. Uh, desaturated the midtones, and if I hover over that, you'll see there's a pretty intricate mask going on there. I've deepened shadows. What I want to focus on is this sunlight upper left. Now, this is not uh, a sunshine kind of scene, but this idea of directional light or you know sunlight coming into a landscape from a certain orientation, uh, accenting that is something I do a lot with my landscape photos. And how am I doing that? Let's dissect this here. We have two pieces. We have a radial gradient. If I click on that and hover, you can see I've got this radial. It's positioned in the upper left. And in this photo, you know, it's uh, roughly where the sun would be coming in if it were a sunny day. And then couple that with a luminance range mask so I'm not affecting the deep shadows, like that tree that is in the upper left. I don't want that to be getting uh, illuminated. So the combination of those two things end up like something like this. That's a pretty intricate mask. And then we see the sliders. There is a increase in the temperature, making it warmer and a touch of exposure. And like I said, this kind of accent is something I do a lot with my landscape photos. So once I've crafted this look, I wanna save this particular piece, just this notion of directional light, in this case from the upper left, and just save it as, uh, as a uh, thing I can use on other photos. If you watch my other videos about saving presets with masks, you know you can do this. Well, you can also just save the individual mask. Let's go through that process here now. So I've got this particular mask created give it a name, give it something like sunlight upper left in my case, or directional light, doesn't matter what you call it, just give it some name other than mask one, mask two. We'll go up into the develop new preset area. And I've created a group for my accent presets. Check none, and then just pick the single mask that you care about. In this case, I'm interested in saving sunlight upper left, and I tend to use the same name for the, the preset. And if I click create, it's going to bark at me saying, oh, hey, you've already got one of these. Are you sure you want to replace it? Because I've gone through this process already. So you know, we know how to save a preset at this point. So I'll just uh, go ahead, um, replace it, it's fine. And now over in my presets area, I have a whole bunch of different accents, but you can see here is sunlight upper left. That is this combination of a radial and luminance range mask that I've set up with uh, with this particular photo. Okay, great. So now I've done the second part. You know, the first part, I've designed this little accent. The second part, I've saved just that accent as an individual preset. Well, how can I use that on other photos and speed up my workflow? Let's have a look. All right, so let me close out this masking area and go over to a completely different photo. So very different scene very different color palette, but the way that these accent presets are created, that doesn't matter. We're leveraging range masks and shapes like radials and things like that where we can have those apply to lots of different kinds of photos. So in this photo here, I've got this area up toward the top where that's where I would like to add a little more directional warmth and that uh, sunlight left I just created, that little accent preset, that's gonna be perfect. So let's go over to my preset area and I have sunlight upper left. As I hover over it, you can see the change in the photo. Let me get off of there and back on. I'll click on it once and that added a mask. 
So I open up the masking area. I now have this sunlight upper left. I'll expand that out. We have that luminance range mask, the radial. They hover over that. Notice that the luminance range mask is specific to this photo. Right? The, the preset saves the luminance range, not anything about pixels in a mask. So this luminance range I'm highlighting now, this is what's in this accent preset. And so as each photo changes, the luminance tones of the photo change, but the way that this accent is going to work is the same. And in this case, uh, for the radial, I will want to take that position and really just kind of put it up toward the top here, rotate it around right about there. And now as I hover over that, I have that directional warmth coming in from the top of the photo, which makes the most sense for this scene before and after. Now that took what 30 seconds or so with me narrating it the whole time. You get the idea of how this can speed up your workflow. You build up this library of accents and then you can apply them to your landscape photos or to any genre really. I could see this working for portraits, skin, things you do to the eyes, things you do to the lips of your subject. The idea is things you do often and you're leveraging shape masks, range masks, build up these accents and you can really get your workflow going quickly. You can double up on these as well. Uh, when I go back to those accent presets, if I add a second one, I'll get a second one. So you can add multiples. So uh, using that portrait example, you have a subject, two eyes in the subject. You could add one for each eye. That would be fine. I'll delete that. And let's just finish this one off. Some other things I often do with landscapes, uh, I like to do a little vignetting on this scene, just like in the bottom. So I'll add that in there. We have this before and after. See that little darkening at the bottom? One more time, before and after. If I need to make adjustments, I've got that radial right there. I'll bring it up a little higher, so I'm darkening a little more of that foreground. Right, right there, before and after. And a uh, freeform vignette, that's something I do a lot of times. Let's open this all the way up here. Vignette freeform, that just, select that. That just gives me a simple, radial to highlight my subject. I could have another one that does like an inner light so I could add an inner light and that might be a good thing for me to add. And I've added uh, creates like a, a variety of these accent presets, some things for glows, some things that just affect the sky, some things that would uh, you know, deepen shadows. You get the idea here. Things that you do often, think about creating your own accent presets and then leverage them because they will be the same style, the same idea that you want to accent for your photo, but the resulting mask and the resulting look, if you're leveraging these range masks, they will be specific to the photo you're working on at the time. So it's, I've been enjoying this, uh, this workflow. So uh, that's the video. I hope you found it useful, informational. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. If you have ideas about how you might use this, some ideas of accents that you're thinking about building up, share those as well. I think it'd be uh, good for all of us to see how this is going to apply to uh, other people's workflows. And uh, maybe we can all start building up our own libraries of accents and just speed up the time at the computer so that you spend less time working on the photos and more time out creating them. I hope you found it good, useful, fun, and until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.